think as we move forward, it's an opportunity for us, you know, to reach uh, so many different people. We have we have great platforms and, and great engagement. So, uh, being able to get this content to as many people, I think, is is really important. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to ANN. I'm your host, Laura Harris. Coming up, more from the Automotive News Congress in D.C. But first, let's begin with the delivery fleet moving towards zero emission. FedEx has 150 bright drop electric trucks rolling on LA streets and highways. It's all part of its transition from EV testing to adoption. The partnership with Bright Drop moves FedEx toward its new EV goal, making 100% of its pickup and delivery fleet vehicle purchases electric by 2030. FedEx, UPS, Amazon, and Walmart are among the companies leading the charge toward EV fleets. Up next, a federal luxury tax is coming to Canada, and dealers there warn the pain will be real. The tax could cause an estimated 19% drop in sales. This totals $566 million over five years, but it's more than just financial damage. Canadian dealers say there will be a decline in sales and a change in consumer behavior. There's big news for Tesla, as the Tesla Model Y tops Cars.com's 2022 American Made Index. Now, the index ranks vehicles by how American made they really are. The ranking considers manufacturing employment compared to automakers' footprint, engine and transmission sourcing, assembly locations, and part sourcing. This is the third year Tesla has participated in the index, and the first year all four of their vehicles have qualified for the index. Our most recent Automotive News Congress in D.C. brought in some of the biggest names in the auto industry. In a wrap-up of the event, several of the key speakers share their insight on what they think the future holds. Whether it's the growing popularity of EVs, how to keep up with consumer demands, or working on accomplishing more dealer transparency. The American auto industry is, is and will continue to be, I hope, the backbone of the American economy. That's Michigan Representative Debbie Dingell. She says EVs may be the vehicle of the future, but currently are not affordable for too many Americans. It will take partnerships between the public and private sectors and policy support to make that happen. We're going to stay at the forefront of innovation and technology, and with intentionality, we will be the leaders on electric vehicles. From EV manufacturing to EV policies, President and CEO of NADA Mike Stanton says dealers need a seat at the table on EV policy to ensure that future developed policies will work. To Stanton, it's about having dealer and factory relations. Now it's just a matter again of getting everybody to the table to make sure that these targets, because they are aggressive targets, become realistic. And the way to do that is through a, a collaborative approach to policy. But there are more ways to approach the future of EVs. CEO and president of Volkswagen Group of America, Scott Keough, says giving dealership pricing transparency, margin stability, and a greater supply will help to move EVs forward. Keough says that rising interest rates and the recession are just another bump for the industry to overcome. It's all part of the more than two years worth of challenges the industry has already faced. I think many of the things that have happened have been collectively good for dealers and collectively good for manufacturers. Other speakers included Vice President of Global Regulatory Affairs at General Motors, David Strickland, Managing Partner at McLarty Associates, Kelly Meemanhawk, and Deputy Assistant Secretary for Sustainable Transportation, Michael Berube. Thanks for watching, everyone. You can read more about the event on our website. And while you're there, be sure to go to autonews.com and click on First Shift to watch our next show. And follow us on Twitter at Autonews TV and online at autonews.com for updates from our reporters all day, every day. I'm Laura Harris. See you all next time.